Welcome back guys, big news. The season end has been announced and is fast approaching. Or, well, it has been announced for some time, but this is the first episode we're acknowledging it. For those who may not be familiar, this marks the end of the current season of Mythic Plus, and all scores will be locked in. In other words, we have a deadline. Hopefully by the time of publishing this video, season 4 should only be a week out with the current title cutoff sitting around the mid 3600s, and likely to increase further over this final week of Season 3. We've got a lot of catching up to do, so lock it in, it's Episode 15 on our Road to Mythic Plus title. As per usual, we're starting the week with some Thyrak Prog before spending the rest of the day depleting Keys and Throne. So the next day we managed to plug into a 28 Waycrest with Big Bob Mobile. I swear retail players have some of the best names, but I don't want to spend too much time on this one or the Thrones from the previous day because around this time I kinda messed up my OBS settings and the Vaz came out looking not so great. That said, we do manage to time this one, and because it's our first 28 Waycrest, we're able to get 10 rating points out of it. But after this, we don't run many more keys for the week. The affixes were fortified, raging, and afflicted, which is not great. As a rogue, I have no way to deal with afflicted, and raging plus fortified is tough. We do eventually manage to time a 27 throne, but I didn't get the footage for this one, so we'll have to trust Raider IO here. I already had a 27 on Tyran, so timing the fortified counterpart gets us another 4 rating. The following week then, we queue into a 28 Dark Arts with the Tyrannical, Sanguine, and Volcanic affix set, which in my opinion is a much easier, but slower set of affixes. And we see that play out here, because without a clean run, we do not have enough time between long boss fights and sanguine healing. Although it doesn't matter because we wiped Xavius. But later in the week we queue back up with the main team, aka Felflames and Bing Jillin for a 29 AD. We have one death to the firewall boss, but otherwise keep things together for a super clean run, timing the key and netting ourselves enough rating to crest the 3600 mark. Now within striking distance of title, we're primed to keep the momentum going as we head into a 28 Everbloom. For this one, we're going to jump to the third boss. We're on pace with two battle reses going into Archmage Soul. So we're in a good spot. But we lose our monk to the first Cinderbolt volley, and after getting them back up, I fall victim to the habit of all melee players as I accidentally strafe into a fire puddle. We commit our last battle res to get me up, but I don't take the res at a great time and get pulled into a frost orb. Bit of a lapse in judgment on my part, it happens and we deplete. The following day, while some of my usual teammates are offline, I manage to queue into a 28 dark heart and we crush it. I was pretty excited to get this one timed after all the depleted dark hearts we experienced in the previous episode. Yes, dude. Let's go! Let's go, man! Oh, fuck yes, dude. Four score. <laughs> With how well this run went, I suggested that we run my 28 wake rest, and in we go. But the start of this run is real weird. Some time ago, this dungeon was changed such that the witch spawns were made consistent between weeks instead of being random. When the witches were random, one of the strats was to shroud up the stairs and into the first boss to avoid one of these witches. But now there's always a witch upstairs, so the strat was made obsolete, and hence you no longer see this. Except, uh, we did not clue into this and pull the witch. Make no mistake, this was not an intended part of our route. We try to improvise and pull it into a couple soul essences, but there's a reason you don't see rune weavers in modern routes. This mob is super dangerous and not very efficient. So a minute and a half later, we start the dungeon for real this time. And as it turns out, we don't actually need the extra time, having a super smooth run of the manor. In fact, two out of our four deaths was our warrior dying and running out to put on a PvP trinket for the second boss. 
Timing this gets us 3 extra score, and we jump into a 29 AD. We proceed to slam out another super clean run, then before the final boss, the Rep Pally ports out to swap talents, and once they get back, we engage Yasma with 7 minutes to spare. What the fuck? No way! Oh, that's so... That's so sad. Wait, wait. Bro went down the wrong side of the ramp. <laughs> Did we stay dead? There's no way, bro. Oh, uh... Five minutes? I mean, maybe. We run it back once more, this time with just under five minutes to spare. But we aren't going to see the end of the fight, because our shaman is not able to live through Solrend. And eventually, we wipe. We call JG's there, and later, I land myself in a 29 Everbloom. This key is just crazy. Like, we have a deathless run, but don't kill Witherbark until 14 minutes, 29 seconds into the key. With Sanguine healing and two target capped classes, I guess things just weren't dying quickly enough. And this key ends in rather unspectacular fashion, as we butt pull the second boss and immediately wipe. At this point, we're much too far behind, but we send a couple more pulls for science before calling things there. Later in the week then, I link back up with the foursome I timed some earlier keys with for a 29 Black Rook. In this one, we have a death early on to the Scavengers, and then I eat to the edge of a Swirly, but we go into the last boss with only two deaths, and enough time for one good attempt. The Shaman actually trades me a file of Icy Preservation here, that I guess they thought I needed to survive, so that was nice of them, and we're going to dunk on Dantalian X, timing our first 29 Black Rook and gaining another 9 score. From here, we head over to a 28 Everbloom, and we're even slower than the 29 I showed coming out of the Witherbark area. So we're likely off pace, but I thought these guys had some pretty cool movement as a means to skip to the second boss. Our Demon Hunter tank leapt to this elevated platform and mounted a passenger mount that the rest of us could then use to get on. Since I'm a rogue, I can just shadow step, and we then ran up to where our DH leapt over this thorn wall, and we again boarded his mount to get across. This allows us to skip straight to the second boss. I'm not sure how fast or efficient it is, but it's certainly unique. Except then we wipe to the second boss, so uh, we run back to 27. This time, with zero deaths, we're much faster coming out of Witherbark. We execute the skip once again, and successfully take down the Ancient Protectors. We have a bit of a scare on Archmage Soul with a few deaths, but that's the worst of it and we take out Yalnu to time the key. Just kidding, we're short on count. And after taking out one more assistant, we time the key for real this time. Then on the Monday, we're going to run one more batch of keys before the reset. The only thing I'll gloss over here is a 28 Dark Heart that we managed to blast through, which gets us one more point. Then, with the turn of the week, we swing back over to Fortified with the affix pairing Storming and Bursting. This is a great affix set, and thus begins our push week, starting with a 29 Atal Bazaar. In this one, we rack up a few deaths to the pull right before the Priestess, after our Reso Druid goes down to a charge and a fiery enchant goes through but our tank is able to stay alive and keep the pull going, so we're able to run back into it and play it out. Then a bit later, on the last trash pool of the dungeon, our tank is going to flop and we collect a couple deaths here. Thankfully, our druid is quick with the B-Res, so only the warrior and I have to run back. But then once we make it back, I get polymorphed and right as it's about to expire, the druid runs into my poly, which then chains to them. And to make matters worse, they then run into the tank, pollying them, and they die a second time. And so does everyone else. We somehow kite this one out, but now our timer is looking real tight. However, and I guess it's because it's Fort Week, we clean up the last two bosses and time the key, gaining three rating points. We're then going to hit up some Plunderstorm before calling it a night, and when we're next back, we're in a 29 Waycrest with the double rogue warrior comp. We have a few early deaths, but we're making good pace heading into Soulbound Goliath. 
Now, since I play human, I have access to my racial to remove these soul thorns once every 3 minutes. But Donne and Bing Chillin play Night Elf. And while we talked about running PvP trinkets, we figured that since it's Fort Week, we could probably get away without needing them. But we find out pretty quick that we did in fact need them, as we are not able to deal with thorns. So we wipe and try once more, but it's more of the same. The five of us were all in comms, and the druid was saying they were having a tough time keeping us alive, suggesting that their class in particular doesn't have great prior target healing for the soul thorns, and that other healers with more direct healing, like monks for example, would have an easier time with it. I'm not a healer, so I don't know, but at the very least, one of the takeaways for us here was that if we were to play this comp again, Donnie and Bing would need to swap out and equip PvP trinkets. After depleting here, we decide to send a 29 Dark Heart, and we kinda blast. Rogues absolutely tear up this dungeon, so our comp makes quick work of this place, beating the timer by more than 2 minutes and pushing our score total to 36-34. That's it for the night, but we're back the following day for another 29 Waycrest with the same comp and… a Holy Paladin? I haven't played with a lot of Holy Paladins, so not sure how things will go, but having a battle res at least is nice. So far, the run is going fine, when before Soulbound Goliath, Bing Chillin and Donne die to zone out and put on PvP trinkets, and we hear this. Is there like a uh, like a 3 pack of maggots or something you can get really small in the meantime? Oh no? uh, yeah. Like a very very baby pool? I'll show you baby. Look at this, 2 maggots. Let's go dude. If you caught the healer asking for mage food, that is significant because as you would come to realize in our 29 Waycrest, they don't have water. So we have to pull Soulbound Goliath with them sitting at 40% mana, but we make it through the fight and the rest of the dungeon without them needing it I suppose. Timing the key and pushing our score total to 3645. This key turns into a 30 fall, which is a great 30 to proc. So in we go, and on the pull timer, this happens. This is my mom. One. <laughs> I gotta do a different mom. That's what I have. Who put I the feel key like in? who put the key in? What? No. Oh, what? Oh, oh wait. We go. We go. We go. Oh, we're fucking practicing. We uh put the wrong key in. We figure whatever and try to play it, but unsurprisingly, it does not go well. And after we wipe. We run back the 30 fall for real this time. And for this run, we're going to jump to the second area, which is by far the most challenging part of this key on Fortified. I won't have Ray Char for first blue. Maybe go time side first? No. We don't, we don't deviate here. Oh my. And this sets the tone pretty well for this section, because it takes us nearly 30 deaths to get through this area. At which point, we're a little too far behind, so GG's is called and we call it for the night. When we're next online, we're back in raid and this time able to successfully kill the fire dragon. We don't play too much more retail this week with the new season of discovery phase, but later on we're able to land ourselves in a 28 throne. And in this one, we're going to jump to the second hallway when the following goes down. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro, a guy died so fast. So we run it back, but we're going to die out once more, and that's key. When we next log on, we're back with the team for the now 29 fall. This time we play the manifested time waste trash better, although not that much better, and we get the time. What I will admit about Holy Paladin is that having them heal for a Riddicron is super nice. I don't know how Holy Paladin works, but they have something that bounces chroma heals to the party, making the Earth Surge phase very free. This gets us 8 rating points, pushing our score total to 3654, placing us right below the current title cutoff. This was a pretty cool moment because for the entire season, we've been looking up and working towards the title cutoff. 
but now we're finally in a position where it's right there. If we can get a few more keys timed, we should be able to lock it in. And as luck would have it, the timed fall becomes a 30 black rope. So in we go. Now, having played with the same people for some time, what we've recently gotten in the habit of doing is having our tank call AOE stops so we can rotate through all of our stops as a group, because at this level, basically every mechanic kills you. To provide some idea, it sounds something like this. The cloaks. I'm on and I fear. I'm gripping. Fear. Shockwave. But unfortunately on this pull, Donnie and I overlap lines, and we run out of stops before the pack is dead. So we rack up a bunch of deaths here. Once we get through it, we opt to shroud straight to the boss and play the mini boss after the main boss goes down. This way we have something to do during the forced RP section. It does mean backtracking, but we think it's the most efficient use of our time. We collect a few more deaths to the trash before the second boss, but the biggest obstacle would prove to be Iliasana Ravenscrest herself. Because in our comp, we don't have a range player. This means the I-beams can target anyone in our group. Okay, all good. We can use the jumping tech to avoid taking damage from this ability. Except, and as we find out after the key, Blizzard had actually just hotfixed this, such that you will take damage even if you're spam jumping. So I'm going to fall over, and we don't have any more battle reses. We try to format it, but we then see our Holy Paladin dies the same way, and we deplete. Our final key sesh for the week has us linking back up with some familiar faces for a 30 way crest. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was not streaming this run because I was not thinking it was going to go very well. But uh, I had to turn my stream on partway through because we were very much on pace. A 30 soulbound goliath without a mage is an awfully frightening prospect. But when we pulled it off, I knew this run had a chance. And with a sub 24 minute row split, we are zooming through this dungeon. We make it to the final scary trash pull of the dungeon with a soul charmer and diviner. Now, prior to starting the dungeon, I had been instructed to stop the diviner, and that the rest of the group would rotate through kicks on the soul charmer. So when the soul volley is being cast and I'm the only available kick, I'm not paying attention to it which then takes me out. And from this point onwards, man do we choke. Missing kicks, and when we pull the boss, our warrior dies multiple times trying to pull off the spell reflect. Their deaths here were super frustrating because I don't think we needed the extra damage from spell reflect to kill the boss. The added risk just wasn't necessary. And after their deaths, we don't have enough time to play the ads separate, so we pull them onto the boss, which unfortunately is going to wipe us, and we deplete. Afterwards, we run a 29 Dark Heart that we somehow managed to time with 16 deaths, but I've done this key already, so we don't get any score here. Speaking of score, our rating has jumped to 3668, as I managed to also time a 29 Black Rook, then a 28 Rise, netting us a further 14 score. I just wasn't streaming when we timed these keys. Our group then times a 29 Atal Dazar, and then a 28 Everbloom. While the Atal doesn't get us any score, the Everbloom certainly does, and we snag 10 more rating points to push our score total to 3678. We're also going to try our luck in a 29 Rise, then Throne, and then a 30 Fall, but we barely miss the timer in the Rise, very quickly deplete the Throne, and deplete the Fall after we butt pull Riddicron during the final trash pack. Looking back, sadly I do have to concede I'm the culprit here. I sidestep towards the boss to dodge a spinny boy, which as I would find out, is close enough to the boss for Shuriken Storm to connect. We aren't able to survive, and that rounds out our keys for the week. Sitting now at 3678, for the first time we're looking down at the rating cutoff, and it feels good. It's taken a lot of work to get to this point, but given it's the final week of Mythic Plus, I would hesitate to say we're safe. And because this fall marks our final key done for the week, we're going to end the episode there. Will this rating hold? Are we safe for title? Or will we need to time something else? In the next episode, we'll see the conclusion to the series. Thank you so much for watching, remember to like and subscribe, 
and I'll see you for the final episode in the series.